In September of 2013, unprecedented rain flooded six different river corridors, causing destruction to homes, businesses, and more than 400 miles of Colorado highways. In 2022, the Colorado Department of Transportation finished the final permanent repair project from the floods. This is the story of building the road to resiliency. After reopening all the roads, the focus for CDOT turned to permanent repairs, managed out of the Flood Recovery Office, led by Heather Paddock. We were in the Incident Command Center for about six months, and then we went into the Flood Recovery Office, um, which was like, we need to transition from emergency repairs, which is really just restoring essential services, to those permanent repairs that says, you know, I now have an asset that can last 30 years. So the ER program allows you to, to put it back the best way you can, get it open. We pay for 100% in the first 180 days. We, we have a clause in there that says build it back to a permanent condition if you can. With the extent and the widespread damage we had, we knew that that wasn't feasible. We, we promoted that, but then we also, again, behind the scenes started looking at what does the permanent repair side look like. So we moved from emergency response to permanent repair, which is really the long game, the marathon part of disaster recovery. We had over 200 projects that we had to document. Um, we did damage assessment reports to sort of describe the damage. And then we had to come up with what is the ultimate solution. But when we looked at the PR side, then we go, OK, how do we first of all create resiliency within our roadways? How do we create a safer roadway? And if this happens again, it will not create the devastation that occurred. And I think we hit that on every project. And it's a tracking nightmare. Yes, most of my flood recovery program as, a, as the manager was to do the permanent repairs, but it was also to clean up all the emergency repair paperwork. And that was probably a couple years. Sounds weird for me to say, but it was almost easy in the beginning because the mission was obvious. We're going to, we've got damage, we've got roads closed, we've got to fix the damage and we got to get the roads open. And then it was very interesting how we kind of organically had to move from that to, okay, now people can get to their homes and we've got roads open, but they're not in any kind of shape to protect for the future. So now what do we do? How do we move into the recovery? And I think that transition from the emergency to what we would call the permanent repairs was really very interesting. And there was a lot of really good work done um, with all the different agencies involved to figure out, you know, and the governor set this challenge out there too of not just building back, but build back better. Well, what did that mean? And how are we gonna do that? And how are we gonna get, you know, the paperwork and the justifications and the documentation together so that we could actually do that? 